back, the story of an American hero. Best of all, it's one man's ode to his oldest brother. We are joined by Romeo Ryan to discuss Me and My Hero, the Rusty Ryan story. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you all for having me. I appreciate now, it. Now, over 50 years ago, your brother was the first black student and football player at an all-white school just south of Birmingham. Talk about his experiences and why it was so important to share his story. Well, Rusty had a great experience. As you know, in 1968, Dr. King was assassinated in, in Shelby County. Now, I, th I think Memphis integrated in like 61, North Carolina in 71, 72. Alabama schools, unfortunately, weren't integrated to 68. Mm -hmm. And black kids were scared to go to school with white kids. You know, they went to black schools and white kids went to white schools. And my mom prayed about it. Like the first chapter of the book says, Mama prayed about letting them go when they came and asked her would it allow them to come. They asked a lot of kids in the neighborhood, and they all said no, they wasn't coming. Mm -hmm. And my mother prayed about it and told Rusty he'd be fine as you go, and Rusty went. A whole year was the only black kid playing football with a white team wow. in Calera. What were, what, what were those experiences like in that school? Well, it's like I tell people today, uh, the white people, was, they was great to my brother. See, like the story like uh, Tillman, the movies they put out, mostly a lot of the movies they put out about the 50s and 60s are negative things, but there was a lot of great things going on with black and white people in the 50s and 60s. Those stories just aren't very popular because like my brother, he was the only black kid in school. No one beat him up, called him the N-word or nothing. Oh, he didn't get hung, beat up. So therefore, it, it, was, it went unnoticed that he was, you know, was very successful that I day. love that. I love mm -hmm. that you're sharing his story now. Um, unfortunately, Rusty Ryan, he passed away in 2014. What was he like? What was your older brother like? Oh, Rusty was an awesome person. Um, I still meet people today that went to school with him, black and white people who wanted to be like Rusty. Rusty, uh, he was just a great person. The reason I say he was a great person, Rusty had football scholarships to go play with Tuskegee and different universities. Well, he turned them down because he wanted to go and serve his country. And we were going through Vietnam at the time. He graduated in 73 and did his basic training at Fort Benning and went off to Colorado and then he shut Vietnam down in 75. But he was pre prepared to go and was willing to go and fight for his country. And to me, I think at 18 years of age, you know, that's a brave thing for a person to do. I mean, I probably would have wanted to go play sports. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, I've got to ask, okay, from 50 years ago, to the present day, have you seen any changes in our society? Oh, I've, saw, I've seen a lot of changes. I've noticed some good and a lot of bad. I mean, like I said, back in the, uh, in the 70s, 60s and 70s, and down in Alabama and in Shelby County, the black and whites all got along great. And I look and notice in the world today, a lot of bad is going on out there, like the riots, and, and it seems like America just took a turn for the worse along the way. And the only thing I can think about back like my brother, when he turned down football and everything is because our mom taught us, you know, at the Bible and that you go, you got to love your neighbor and, mm -hmm. and treat everyone like you want to be treated. And Rusty was that type of person. And that's why I realized that uh, through his whole life, the people kept up with Rusty, black and white, because Rusty was always there for people. And he saved my life and a lot of people's life along the way. How did he, how did he save your well, life? Well, I was partying. My, my mom died when I was 16. I okay. took it real hard. Yeah. And I started partying, doing drugs. And mm -hmm. at the University of Alabama, I nearly drowned at the swimming pool down there because I was so drunk and out of it and doing the weed and stuff like that. And Rusty heard about it. And he come got me and took me, I call it in the book, kidnapped me. <laughs> he was a big guy. He was 6'2", you know, I wouldn't dare argue with him. He took me to live with him in Columbus, Georgia, Fort Benning. He helped me get my life on track because I'd, I'd hit a bridge doing 90 miles, 90 miles an hour in his Corvette, totaled it, the Corvette. And my brother loved me, but he kept on and was patient with me until uh -huh. he got me back on the right track. That saved my life. It seems like he has a lot of lessons, not just for you, but for the present day. What do you think we can do collectively as a society to continue to change the narrative? Well, it's like I tell the kids when I go to schools and different places, youth attentions, and talk to them. Um, I was brought up in the church, and that's when I strayed. I went away from the church and reading the book. Uh, this is why this is my favorite picture of Rusty, because Rusty strayed along the way, too. He was a boxer in the military. He lost a lung and everything and nearly died. And he continued to serve his country, but he got depressed, went through PTSD, and ended up in trouble. Well, he gave his life back to the Lord and started preaching the Word of God. And it changed his life for the better. Rusty died a millionaire in a house bigger than Graceland, you know? <laughs> his brother's truly blessed with restaurants, all kind of businesses. And I tell people, as a nation, we need to go back to God because that's why we've made the wrong turn in, in our, taking it out of our schools and just out of our lives, really. We just got to love one another and be nicer. You know? Love one another. Yeah, Amen. I can get down with that. Now, your older brother was your hero. Do you have any advice for young men out there? Well, like I say, you know, you just got to, you know, when you're in school, take advantage of the opportunity like Rusty did because 
I mean, you know, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity to, you can further your education and go to college. You can be anything you want to be nowadays. I mean, tell the black kids, you can even be president nowadays, you know? That's right. And so just, you know, listen to your parents, listen to your teachers, man, and stick in there and take advantage of it, you know? Yes. And, uh, you know, life will turn out great for you. I'm ah, glad they did. Love to hear it. Thank you so much well, for joining us, Thank you for having me. Romeo. I really appreciate it. I can't wait for everyone else to read this. Me and My Hero can be purchased on Amazon or any online bookstore. Read more at meandmyhero.org.